So our next speaker in this technical stage is Phil Nash, the developer evangelist at Twilio. He'll be talking to us on better API developer experience with the CLI. Hey, Phil. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Faisal? Uh, sorry, Prasant. <laughs> hey, <laughs> going just so far, good. Uh, let me just get my so, screen up. Ah, yes. There we go. There we are. Yes, it's there. So I'll join back you after 20 minutes. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much for that. Yep, and uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. It is afternoon uh, in Jakarta, at least. It's it's the evening here. I'm, uh, I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Um, my name is Phil Nash. Uh, I am a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio. Now, if you don't know about Twilio, or not heard of it before, we are a communications platform. Uh, so that means that we provide APIs for everything you can think of to do with communications, from uh, sending emails, uh, making phone calls, sending text messages, uh, anything you can think of. Um, you can use Twilio to communicate with people. If you have any of you ever have any questions about that, just drop me a line on, on the internet at all these places, um, Phil Nash all over the place, or just drop me an email, philnash at twilio.com. Now I'm here to talk to you a bit about uh, better API DX with a CLI. And I think this is a talk title, uh, this is the talk title with the most acronyms uh, I've ever used before. Uh, so I want to break those down just quickly. Um, I mean, I hope we all know what an API is, application programming interface. It is API days after all. Um, but DX is developer experience. We're on the developer experience track this afternoon. And then CLIs are command line interfaces. So how can we improve the developer experience of using an API with a command line interface today? Um, Developer experience is a huge term, of course. It covers an awful lot of things. We just saw some, from Faisal the, the idea of sandbox APIs to allow developers to interact with an API without um, using production resources. Uh, really important uh, kind of thing to, to have available to you. Um, and developer experience runs from you know documentation and, and that, uh, that getting a developer from uh, signing up to making their first API call. Uh, it's the helper libraries that you provide in different languages. It's all of those things. Um, so I'm going to look a little bit about that developer experience of using the API, and like I said, with a, a CLI today. Because at Toyo, a couple of years ago, we decided we, we needed to build a CLI uh, for our API, uh, and we went ahead and built one. Um, it's, it exists on the command line. In fact, I'm going to go show you just quickly, uh, oops, there we go, uh, that it works. Um, <laughs> Uh, so it's the Twilio command now, and that's kind of nice. And it allows us to access all sorts of things in our API. So I can go and list, for example, my incoming phone numbers. Uh, and we can see that I have one, uh, just one in this account. Uh, and I can use it to make other API requests, like going and taking that and uh, creating uh, a message to, say, myself uh, using that um, message. Um, and set the text to hello API days and it should arrive on my phone. There we go. Cool. So uh, this is a CLI that's using uh, the, um, we're using the, the main uh, non sandbox API in this, of course, uh, to send real things. Um, but that's the Twilio CLI right there uh, getting use. Um, I'll give you a few technical details about what's behind uh, that uh, little command. Um, it's built in JavaScript, it runs on Node.js. Uh, we chose that for a number of reasons, uh, one of which was that uh, it's an easy thing to contribute to, uh, writing in JavaScript. Uh, secondly, uh, we use the framework Oakleaf uh, to build this. Now, Oakleaf is a Node.js framework, of course. Um, it's built by Heroku, and it powers the Heroku CLI, which has been around for, for years now. So uh, it's a battle-tested framework for that kind of thing. It has a load of options to it, and we'll see how some of those options uh, work uh, in in. Uh, to the benefit of the CLI later. Uh, and then it's uh, distributed by NPM. So uh, for anybody who already has Node installed, um, you can just NPM install uh, Twilio CLI uh, or uh, via um, Homebrew on Macs. Uh, we don't actually have a full kind of executable package for this, like self-contained uh, thing yet, although I think that's something we're hopefully working towards. Um, that's a few of the technical details. Um, but the reason we wanted to build this uh, wasn't for everybody. Like it's important when you're taking on a project like building a CLI for, for something like this to know the audience you're after. Not everybody will want to use a CLI. Not everyone's comfortable inside the terminal, and that's fine. Um, but we were off, we were targeting uh, this particular product uh, to those who were. We had a couple of hypotheses uh, that developers prefer the the command line to um, to clicking around in the UI of the the console. Uh, and that actually they could be quicker and more efficient 
uh, using a command line where they uh, happy like uh, never leaving the never leaving the keyboard. Uh, and the second hypothesis is very much just that developers would like to automate uh, actions with their Twilio account as well. And the best way to do that is via a, an API, a CLI that has those um, things built into it rather than making them write full full scripts. Um, we can use the CLI to, to include in CI, CD kind of pipelines if, if required. Um, but then we thought, then we had to start thinking about how to make this CLI worthwhile, uh, make it the best CLI we could for people who wanted to use the API. And this is, um, I, I felt like this, there were three questions we kind of asked, and this is this is what I want to get across to you today. If you're thinking of doing this, or if you even have built a CLI for your own API, uh, for your own API, um, uh, and if you're thinking of doing so in the future, these are the three questions I think you should ask about it. Like, what's the minimum the CLI can do to be useful? Uh, you know, when you want to get your first version of the product out, uh, what's the minimum it can do? Next up, what can you add to a CLI to make it a better experience? And I'm, I'm excited to cover that with you in a bit. And then what can your users add to the CLI? Uh, and I'll I'll go into that as we get to that near the end. So I like to think of, uh, you know, what's the minimum viable CLI here? Well, this is not a, we're not building a startup here, but what's the thing that we can release uh, to, to a bunch of developers and, and have them get usage out of it? Uh, without us having to try too hard. Um, I think the minimum viable CLI has a couple of bits, one of which is uh, you know, the commands for your API endpoints, all of them, notably. Like, we don't know exactly what people want to do with the CLI yet. We're building it as, as a new thing. Um, so you need to include the commands for all of your API endpoints. You know, and following that, documentation for them. Uh, we don't want to... Um, uh, show uh, we, we we don't want people to be floundering about with the CLI, having to look up documentation online because that has uh, uh, that changes the the point was to stay on the keyboard and not in the UI. The thing is, um, the commands for your API endpoints and documentation, all of that probably exists somewhere already, uh, and so you probably want to automate and generate uh, commands like this. And that can be a big uh, upfront process in terms of building a thing like this. But I think it's important for on ongoing maintainability. Uh, and if you already have a, a spec, like an open API spec, or you're an API definitions that you use internally, then you are well set to do this. Uh, and the important thing about generating stuff like this uh, is that every time you add a new API endpoint, you don't have to bug a developer to add a new command to the uh, CLI as well. You can just regenerate them. Uh, I, I think it was funny. Um, uh, I was watching uh, Jenks uh, speaking earlier from Zero uh, to talk about how they, and uh, he mentioned how Zero have more than 40 uh, endpoints. And uh, I'm not trying to show off or anything, uh, but um, if I go back here and just, uh, if I go to Twilio and the API command and I hit tab, uh, it asks me if there's, if I want to see all 1056 possibilities. Yeah, I think we have, and uh, I, I think we have over a thousand API endpoints at Twilio now. Uh, so there's absolutely, uns absolutely unsustainable to, um, uh, not be generating those things. And also, uh, actually, whilst I'm here, I think it's important to note that um, the documentation uh, is important. Uh, and right here, like, for example, in sending a message, the, this is the thing I used earlier. This is the documentation that lists all of the, the potential flags uh, and including all of the arguments, the parameters that the API takes, and uh, explanations of them. This documentation is pretty much as good as the documentation we have on the website. So um, that is important, I think, especially when we're going for our minimal viable uh, CLI. So uh, we got those two things, but I think there's one more bit that's really important. Um, uh, and that is you know, secure credential storage. Um, Whilst I've been using the CLI in front of you right now, you'll have noticed that I hadn't included my account ID or my auth token. Uh, those have already been set inside the API, uh, and that means I don't have to repeat repeatedly uh, enter them in order to use uh, in, in, in order to use any of the endpoints. Uh, so having that those bits, those credentials stored, I think that's important too, just for an experience that we want people to use. Uh, having to go and find my credentials and input them in as flags every time is. Uh, would be a hassle, and I would I would just stop using the CLI again. So that's the the minimum version. But what can we do, go for after that? How can we build a better experience? You see, the nice thing about um, Twilio and our kind of developer uh, relations um, organization is that, uh, and that's where the CLI came from, um, 
is is that we all use that API and we all know that we have various things we like to do with it. And we know the bits that are sometimes a bit of a pain to do, especially if you're trying to script it. Um, and so how can we make this a better built-in experience? Um, so you saw already I've used things under the Twilio API subcommand, um, but let's go back to the uh, CLI and, um, and see what else we have available to us. Uh, again, the thing is quite self-documenting, which is really nice. So if you hit uh, you know, dash dash help, or actually even if you just call on Twilio with no arguments, uh, you'll get the help page here. And we have other commands under API. So we've got autocomplete, debugger, email, feedback, help login, phone numbers, plugins, and profiles. And I'm gonna go through them just to point out what they do and what you might consider if you're building your own CLI. Um, so first up, autocomplete, super important. Um, it's not it's not as important as like uh, the login profiles, but if you hit autocomplete, this gives you the instructions to install autocomplete for the CLI. And you see me using that already, right? I'm I'm not writing all these things. If I write messages, create, um, oops, don't need all of that. Um, being able to tab complete things is really useful. Uh, it's really useful for discovery of the the things that you can do as well. So if I get to Twilio API core oops, messages, um, it can show me all the things I can do from here. So I think it's really useful. Um, but let's move on from that, because uh, these, these talk slots are short, so let's move on. We've got debugger up next, Twilio debugger. Um, this is really an interesting one. Uh, so this is kind of a, a bit of a stub right now. Uh, so we have the command Twilio uh, debugger logs list. And I'm just going to give this a different profile because the demo profile I'm using doesn't actually have any debugger logs. So here's some debugger logs. Um, this is great to see like what's gone wrong in your apps in your uh, application from uh, um, from the command line. But uh, this is only a subset of the features that we want because we actually want to include live tailing uh, for the logs later. That's not something we can do from the API just yet, but it's something we want to build in, and we're asking for feedback on that as well. Uh, next up is email. That's a real quick one. Um, since we uh, brought SendGrid into Twilio a couple of years ago, um, uh, the APIs have still not kind of joined together under one uh, domain, under one set of API definitions. So we can just add another API to the, to the CLI. Uh, and, the, and the email uh, option there just allows us to test sending an email from a SendGrid account, which is really nice. Um, next up is feedback, uh, which I think should go into all command lines, really. Um, if you are looking for user feedback, uh, then you can get it just by giving developers who are using the CLI a way to do so. And this link here just takes uh, takes you to a form to fill in feedback. And why wouldn't you want that user feedback? It's gold for anything you're trying to do that's improving an experience. Um, under feedback is help, uh, which we've which we're looking at right now. Uh, under that, we can see login and profiles, and that both uh, concerns themselves with that credential uh, credential storage. Um, and as you can see, I've got like two profiles. I can list list them, and I have my demo and default profiles. And you can see I'm using my demo profile right now. Nice. Um, and then finally, I got this is the most important one I think to me: uh, the phone numbers. Um, uh, phone numbers here, so I can do phone numbers list, for example. And we saw something similar to this earlier. We saw me use Twilio API core incoming phone numbers list. Um, and so Twilio phone numbers list, that's a shortcut. And that's useful because you probably, you know, you don't want to type so many things as API core incoming phone numbers. And incoming phone numbers is a slightly odd uh, term for that. It's important as part of it, but when you're thinking about your Twilio phone numbers, Twilio phone numbers list is a great uh, thing. So that's a nice little shortcut, but we get better than that because we can also uh, use Twilio phone numbers uh, by, and for example, I can look to buy a mobile number and I'll need a country flag for that. Uh, I'm gonna use Australia because that's where I am. Uh, so buying a phone number in Twilio requires you to search for a bunch of available phone numbers and then choose to purchase one. So there's two API calls there, or if you use the phone numbers by command, um, we get a bit of an interface here where I can select a number and then hit enter, and that'll give me the choice to then make the next API call without having me having to take an ID or a number and post it into the next thing. Uh, I won't buy a new number right now, but that's a much nicer experience. And we get a bit of a fancy um, CLI experience there with, um, with that list that we can scroll up and down as well. Uh, and then finally, um, 
when uh, when when you have a phone number, uh, and let me get my old phone number back here again. Um, when you have a phone number with Twilio, when somebody makes a call or sends a text message to that phone number, we send a webhook on to a URL that you provide. Um, now, that's not the easiest or most straightforward thing to deal with when you're building an application, uh, because webhooks have to hit a, a, a publicly available URL. Uh, so, um, I would have done there. Uh, so, what we did, uh, because that's a, a that can be a pain for people, is um, we built it into the, when you update a phone number. This is just sending an update request to the API. Uh, if you give the URL. Uh, for your webhook, uh, a localhost, localhost URL. Let's see, it's on port 4000, uh, the messages endpoint. Um, what this does is it set, it starts up an ngrok tunnel. Ngrok is a is one of many ways to uh, tunnel uh, and create a public URL for a locally running uh, application. So this has started an ngrok tunnel. It's taken the URL of the ngrok tunnel and it's actually saved that now to the phone number. If I was to send a text message, into that phone number, uh, Twilio would hit this ngrok URL, which would then hit uh, localhost 4000 on my machine. And that's all built into that uh, one single command. And then when I stop the command, the tunnel is brought down and uh, and the, your public, your, your development environment is now safe again from the outside. Uh, so that's three things inside phone numbers there. One, it's a little shortcut. Two, we are allowed to, uh, we can buy phone numbers in a much nicer experience than using the individual um, the individual commands. And then finally, there's extra things uh, that you can build in to make webhooks easier in this particular case uh, by uh, just, just taking that thought process out of the user's head. So let's, um, let's take a look quickly over there. So as I said, over there, we also complete really good for um, just typing long things, especially when you have over a thousand endpoints apparently. Uh, shortcuts to commands are really useful. Extra APIs, if you want to bolt them on, or if they're not quite part of your definitions yet, you can still add them as a bonus. Um, asking for feedback is really useful because you can find out what people actually do like and don't like about it. And then extra capabilities for those specific APIs. If you can make a, if you can think of a way to make an API work better, um, you can build it into the CLI and and just put that power in developers' hands. And then finally. And this is the last part uh, that I want to come to. Who else can contribute to this experience? Um, plugins was the one thing in that top level that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, and this is, um, uh, like I said earlier, Oakliff is a really great framework for this kind of stuff. There will be other CLI frameworks in other languages if that's more things you're more comfortable with. But looking for things that, avail that allow for plugins is really important. Um, Oakliff also provides the autocomplete plugin, uh, which allows us to do autocomplete. So I, I do recommend you look into Oakliff if you're using these things. Um, but plugins, uh, ironically, uh, Oakliff plugins is a plugin for Oakliff to allow you to do plugins. Uh, but but we have Twilio plugins uh, now. And uh, if I were to take a quick look here at the plugins, I don't have any installed uh, right now. I, I did a fresh install for this. Uh, but that means I can look at the available plugins, for example. And you can see these are the ones that we've actually built in. There could be third party ones that I don't know about, um, but these are the ones we have here. Uh, two contributors really, Twilio Labs, which is uh, open source work at Twilio that isn't a main product team. Uh, and so a bunch of these are, again, the developer relations team uh, building different things that we think people would like. And then there's one third party one there, which I'll get to in a bit. Uh, I can tell you a bit about a couple of these plugins because I have the time. Uh, there are things like plugin token, um, which allow you to generate access tokens for some of our thing, um, some of our products like video or chat, uh, and generating a test access token without having to write the pl the code for it isn't really useful. Plugin watch does actually allow you to tail all activity happening in your Twilio account right now, which is very useful if you are um, if you want to watch what's going on. Uh, plugin serverless. So Twilio has a little serverless um, uh, capability, allows you to bundle up functions and assets, um, functions written in JavaScript and assets into little deploys that you can then use as part of your application. Um, the actual process, and uh, so buying a phone number takes two API requests. The process to bundle up a serverless application and uh, deploy it to Twilio takes a, num takes a whole bundle of them. Um, depending on how many functions, how many assets you have, and then you put it, put them in an environment, create a build, and deploy that build. Plugin Serverless handles all that for you with just a single deploy 
uh, um, command, but it also allows you to develop locally and run in the same sort of environment. And it also allows you to generate new applications. Uh, and then finally at the bottom, uh, like I said, there's Dabble Lab, who are a, a company, I think in Europe, who've created an autopilot plugin. Now autopilot is our bot builder and Dabble Lab have built more bots than we have with it. Uh, and so they were the perfect people to have created a plugin to make it easier to build and then even um, uh, export your uh, bots or import them from other services and run them on Twilio instead. Uh, so the plugins make this available uh, to, to anyone to add. Um, and uh, let me just pop back here. Um, it makes it available for anyone to kind of add that extra functionality to the CLI. Or, you know, if there are um, businesses using your API, they can build their own private plugins that are going to make their life easier. Um, the command, uh, so the way this actually works in practice is that there is a, a command class that um, the Twilio CLI makes available. When you uh, extend that, when you inherit from it, uh, you get access to a authorized Twilio client that can hit the API using the profile that the plugin that the CLI user is using at the time. Uh, and so with that, you have the whole Twilio API at your disposal, at your disposal, and then the rest of Node.js, uh, the rest of the JavaScript kind of ecosystem ready to go as well, uh, all uh, there for you to create and, and enhance this CLI. So that's why I think there's, there's these three questions when you're building an API for a CLI, you know, what's that minimum CLI uh, that you can do to be useful? Um, what do you think? I, you know, let's include all the API endpoints, let's include documentation, let's not make people log in over and over again. I think that's the minimum for me. Uh, it might be different for you. Uh, next, what can you add to the CLI to make it a better experience? You already know some things that you would change uh, or you would make easier uh, when you think about it. Uh, but then adding that plugins functionality means that other people can come with ideas that you'd never thought of uh, and add those to the CLI as well. And of course, means that the, the, the development of this is distributed over more people as well, uh, meaning that uh, you know, your CLI team is not uh, tasked with handling every single bit of extra functionality. Um, I've got a couple of links. I will share the links to slides which have these as well. That's a link to the, the CLI itself and the source code, uh, as well as a, a blog post that goes into some of those extra um, functionality, but let's, uh, I want you to go out there and build great CLIs. I, I love using the Twilio CLI. I use it all the time. <laughs> and, uh, and I reckon that, um, uh, you can do the same for your APIs too. So build great CLIs. Um, that's all I've got time for. Thank you so much again. My name is Phil Nash. I am a developer evangelist at Twilio, uh, and I'd love to hear any of your questions or, um, uh, shout me online at Phil Nash on Twitter or on LinkedIn or drop me an email at philnashtwilio.com. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Phil. Uh, I think your show off uh, <laughs> attracted some questions. <laughs> Jenks has <laughs> sent his two questions down your way. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> do you think, uh, first one, do you think or know this CLI has ability to be deployed in production setting? Yeah, so the CLI is, um, it's difficult to, to... I'm not quite sure what you mean by production setting there, but we uh, are definitely uh, confident that the CLI here is to be used in, uh, in in CI CD pipelines and other things like that, where you want to maybe trigger events within your account um, using the the CLI. Uh, absolutely, yeah. This uh, uh, I think technically we uh, we still list the CLI as a as a beta product at Twilio, but that's uh, that's due to the way that we define what a, a, a GA uh, generally available product is with our operational maturity model. Um, and then uh, there's a whole talk, um, there's a whole keynote in our, our operational maturity model. But um, but in general, the CLI, uh, well, I mean, under the hood, it's using the Node.js library for Twilio. Uh, that's been in production for um, years and years. And so, uh, yes, it's absolutely capable to be used in and around a production setting. Um, but it's, uh, uh, but yeah, not, I've, you know, it doesn't have to be part of an app. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, the second one. Uh, can authentication done completely on CLI can not go through any UI? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the if I I'm oops sharing there and bring back my terminal for a second. Um, basically, if you just uh, if you go to well Twilio really login, it actually asks for your account your account ID uh, and your auth token. Um, now, if you don't have your account ID and auth token uh, to hand. 
um, then uh, you might have to hit the um, uh, you might have to hit up the uh, uh, the console. But if you do have them in an in a in a config file somewhere, then yes, you can um, log in with those there and then. And then what it happens is we don't actually store the account ID and auth token. We use those to create an API key and secret, which can be then revoked later, and they get stored. Um, and that's what we talk about, making sure that that's secure, uh, and then stored normally in the block in the keychain of a, of the device that you're on as well. So, um, yes, you can do the authentication all through the CLI uh, as long as you have your account ID and auth token to hand. Okay, great. Uh, thanks and yes, uh, sorry, I just saw Jinx. Here. Sorry, I was going to say I just saw Jinx is like, yeah, you can send a SMS to manager when the deployment fails. Yes, absolutely, that's a great way to use it as part of a, an alerting system. Uh, in a in a pipeline. Cool. So uh, thank you. Uh, shall I head out? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Uh, Thanks.